Uh, dear Ambassador Bozaik and distinguished guests, uh, it's a great honor to host this time to you and at the capital of the EU, uh, at Brussels. So I think uh, it's a very timely event. Uh, we're going to explore uh, the cooperation opportunities between the organization of Turkic states and uh, European uh, Union. He emerges of organization of Turkish state as a new actor in the nation arena is a very significant development. Uh, Turkey, Turkey and member states uh, put very significant value to this organization and it's becoming an international body with greater uh, visibility. So in many areas, this organization is trying to explore cooperation opportunities, including with the uh, BU and EU member and the countries. And uh, uh, we assume that uh, this will gain further uh, strength in the coming years uh, due to the uh, developments in the area, uh, the ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia, and some of the vulnerabilities of the EU, EU member countries has been complemented by organization of the Turkish states. And there are really important cooperation opportunities, including the area of uh, trade, uh, energy, uh, connectivity in different areas. So here with this panel co-organized by CETA Foundation and Private Aviation Studies Center at Ibn Haldin University, we tried to brought experts to explore the cooperation opportunities between EU and OTS, Organization of Turkey States. So what we uh, aim with this series of talks, so we are planning to have so this is in general uh, a networking meeting and uh, 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 a panel, but we aim to extend, increase uh, opportunities in various different areas. And we try to substantiate uh, the potential cooperation uh, fields. And there's an increasing interest, I know a bit Turkey and, and the other uh, member uh, countries. So, the summit, which took place under the slogan of a new era of Turkish civilization on the way to common development and prosperity, I think there are some, some uh, elements of inspiration from the EU as well. So the EU has been established uh, by member countries that complemented along uh, the shared uh, interest and throughout uh, the years, decades, it turned into a uh, economic superpower uh, with uh, significant values, norms, and institutions. And we assume that this inspiration, uh, this success, uh, will also inspire the members of OTS with the, in the coming years. And the Turkey Grows 2040 vision document agreed on by Turkic state leaders during the summit held last year in Istanbul was a vision document which proposed further cooperation between the member states at the field of security, embraces cooperation and corporate uh, collaboration in uh, areas. And in the recent Samarkand uh, summit, those vision documents had been uh, advised for further cooperation and collaboration with uh, other international actors, including the EU. So idea of collaboration and cooperation needs to be substantiated. So with these meetings, with this uh, discussion, we will try to uh, substantiate these cooperation uh, areas, which we assume that this, um, I think the timing is also uh, very uh, important because when uh, these cooperation areas uh, fit into important times where there are liberties of uh, the uh, uh, partners, uh, this may have a further accelerating impact in their relationship. So we see a window of opportunity in terms of extending this cooperation. We know that it will take a long time to substantiate and strengthen these ties, but I think that opportunities are there, inspiration are there, and Billig was started, and, and I think, uh, you know, this uh, will be uh, strengthened both by the experts, uh, politicians, as well as the community, uh, the systemic community that invest in this uh, project, in this cooperation. So it's a great uh, pleasure for uh, as uh, he, uh, CETA and 
high level of Santorini, the high university to start this, uh, you know, uh, event. And we will continue this series of uh, events. So I would like to thank all, um, you know, uh, of course, join this uh, event. So I would like to give the floor to uh, Ambassador Mehmet Kemal Bozayt, and a privileged representative of Turkey, Turkey to uh, EU. So uh, it's a great pleasure to have him. And uh, after Mr. Ambassador, we will continue our panel. Mr. Ambassador, please. Thank Distinguished guests, thank you very much, distinguished uh, director of SETA. First of all, I'd like to thank SETA and Ida Idea Center and Ibn Idol University and also Pope to bring us this opportunity. It's a very timely occasion, but it's a very timely discussion in two aspects. One is that today, when we are having this discussion in Samarkand, with you. High rep is having uh, uh, another important uh, gathering uh, with Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan on the uh, Samarkand Nativity Conference. So it means that when there is an important meeting in Samarkand, we are discussing the issues here in uh, Brussels. It is uh, very timely because of that. It is it's more strategic. Timely discussion. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, and why it's timely in a strategic way is uh, based on some concepts. I will just tell you some concepts and then try to make the matrix of it. Interconnectivity, global gateway, and immunitarization. This is an important uh, concept, and also corridors. And of course, I, I'm sure that the Panelists will also discuss on energy, transportation, food, which were before very important uh, issues, which they became now uh, national interest issues and security issue. Uh, why I mentioned some of the concepts like uh, global gateway interconnectivity, the EU would like to be uh, and wider region polar between US and China. As uh, Ferdinand is here, and, and I will uh, very frankly talk about all these things, he's one of the architects of these concepts. And some land is also over, works a lot on this issue. So I will look uh, the, the main uh, discuss, uh, discussions will uh, make so many comments on these things, but I will just make some small uh, warnings, when I say warnings, in a positive way, in a constructive way, because the EU is exploring some strategies uh, for having better sustainable and also uh, uh, more openings, more assertive policies. And uh, I will be ambitious here. This goes to Turkey and Turkic states. Why? We look at, if you look at the map uh, in a simplistic way, if you would like to explain, and if you put you're here. We look up there and on the east side, we have a war. And after this war, when EU would like to have a strategic autonomy and openings, it should go eastward. And then when it goes to eastern uh, semifair of the world, the of the globe, EU comes to Turkey. And down there, there is Syrian war and also Libyan war down there. And we see that the only way, the only opening global gateway goes through uh, Turkey. And uh, my colleague who's in charge of uh, transportation and also some strategic issues, he reported me that, Burak uh, Öztür, in recent discussions, EU officials signals that the Northern Corridor would never regain its former status even after the war. When I say corridor, please do not take it as a land uh, transportation. It's air transportation, supply chains, pipelines, grain corridor like from the sea, and all are going to the direction of Turkey, which is the only candidate country with the customs union. So 
here the warning is that while EU would like to have global gateway policies and to have interconnectivity, on the other side, what we see that unilateralization of the trade and some kind of um, some, some some kind of defensive policies. I am saying it not out of any academic work, but I am saying it as the Turkish ambassador to the EU. The issues that I am facing, I see the trend here. So, in order to add this dilemma to be solved and overcome by mutual cooperation and mutual uh, on, on the basis of mutual interest, we should work very hard and we should work very fast because uh, any anything happening in the world uh, is taking place in in in, in, in over thunderstorm pace and in that sense and, uh, if we lose time by uh, making some meetings deciding what to do we might uh, be on the wrong side of the history and in uh, in this sense uh, i believe that we should work on and we should concentrate on our uh, we should concentrate our discussions on whether uh, regionalization or the unilateralization be the policy of the EU, or EU would also have an overarching policy, including the Turkic states, which will be the future of the global trade and global openings, global transportation, global energy, and to add good relations and con uh, you know constructive relations with all these states, including Turkey, which is the real gateway to this. Uh, Turkic states world. And in that sense, I know that very precious uh, panelists, eminent figures, will discuss on all these issues. And I'm happy to hear that uh, 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 Professor Fuset told us that it would be a series of uh, study on this, uh, you know, uh, Turkic state and EU cooperation. Uh, in, uh, we would like to have infrastructures to uh, uh, strengthen this global gateway to keep the interconnectivity and we need to work on and how to prevent any kind of protectionism. Unfortunately, what I see, there is a trend of protectionism, regionalization, deglobalization, and this will turn all the globe into Mad Max type of regional uh, actors. And this will not be beneficial for the EU. This will not be beneficial for Turkey, Turkey and Turkic states. I know that there is also a representative of Hungary. Uh, Hungary. And this is why and, and it is important for us to have this meaningful cooperation with the EU. And Hungary is also one of the, as I said in Serbia, I know the fun of the gateways to the EU and also uh, as being uh, in the reorganization of Turkish states as observer. This is very important. The role of Hungary is very important to tell all these stories. I believe this group should continue to work on these things. I, as I mentioned to you, I made a matrix, a simple matrix. There, global gateway, interconnectivity. On the other side, deglobalization and also unilateralization of trade and also regionalization. And if we go to the other side, this will not be beneficial for Hungary, for the EU, and this will not be beneficial for my country. Because the EU and Turkic states are the actors that benefit from peace and stability more than the others. Some other actors, they benefit from instability and chaotic situation. But if we go to the unilateralization and we start to take some uh, unilateral measures in trade, or uh, already existing systems like customs union uh, would be blocked by not modernized, then we will face really serious problems and it will be too late to deal with them in this fast pace of the international relations that we see as I, I don't want to make uh, some comments like Nostradamus, we have wars and all uh, strange things around us and we don't know what's happening. All of a sudden two missile scores or two, two, two uh, Polish people are fortunately killed and we had terrorist activities in Istanbul. And if we work on these issues, we can also prevent such things. Uh, as uh, the, the real experts, 
Uh, I know they will be Leshar Roja and uh, Esmira Mandala Esmira uh, and also uh, for Roja Happy Peck take them with this talk on all this she said Hadi Peck uh, I'll count it here and then I'll wish you all the success and I will kind of ask Ferdinand somewhere and the Kivish the, the said so I'm very I'm here to really think about I've made it in a very you know uh, simple way these concepts and how we can work on uh, to have a productive cooperation, exploring partnership opportunities in the scope of these realities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador uh, Bozaid. So you mentioned both opportunities for uh, cooperation as well as some uh, negative developments the world turns into more, uh, you know, call close cooper uh, condition. So well, what we're going to do today is uh, we have uh, five very distinguished experts here, but we also have experts uh, in the, you know, uh, uh, rule. So uh, we will give around uh, 10 minutes intervention to our speakers. But I think uh, what's more important is to engage, strengthen this dialogue and contributions of our participants are also uh, very important. So uh, we assume that this dialogue will be an extended. So uh, we have, uh, as I said, five uh, speakers. So uh, Professor uh, Prak uh, Purtash will uh, start with the uh, 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 idea uh, behind the organization of Turkish Turkic states. He's a, a Dean of International Relations Department, uh, International Relations Department at Hajbeir Bayram Medi University in Ankara. He worked as the Deputy Secretary General at the International Organization of Turkic Culture Turk Soy between 2008 and 2019. He recently published a report from uh, SETA Foundation about the uh, organization of uh, Turkic states. So he will give uh, the main uh, idea and development of organization of Turkic states. So our second speaker uh, will be uh, Professor uh, Yashar Sarı. Uh, professor Yashar Sarı is an international relations professor at Ibn Haldun University and Abant is at Bayt at Bayt, uh, Baysan University. He's uh, the director of Hande Radiev Center for App uh, Application and Research uh, of Eurasian uh, Studies at Ibn Haldun University, where he also tries to extend uh, economic and uh, research and uh, academic cooperation uh, in this uh, area. Our third speaker uh, will be uh, Estira Jafarova, is the board member of Center of Analysis of International Relations Air Center. She holds PhD degree in political science, University of Vienna, Austria. And uh, from 2001 to 2016, she held uh, different position, uh, positions in Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, of Republic of uh, Azerbaijan. So she will highlight the issues related to energy uh, cooperation. And um, my fourth speaker will be uh, Ms. Itek Tekdemir. Uh, she's a political analyst and strategic communication advisor in the European Parliament. Uh, in her professional career, she is focusing on strategic communication, sustainability, capacity building, and business development. She has uh, done a lot of uh, work between uh, cultural diplomacy between the EU, Tur uh, Turkey, and Central Asia uh, countries and the Middle East. So she will contribute and highlight, especially the cultural diplomacy side of this discussion. And uh, not last but not least, we will have Mr. Padu Kunray. Uh, I would like to also thank uh, him for hosting us at this uh, venue. He is the head of uh, Union of Chambers and uh, Commodities Exchange of Turkey's representative in uh, Brussels. He's an economic uh, expert. He has been uh, following the developments in, uh, especially in economic affairs in uh, Europe uh, for uh, many years. Uh, so uh, it's also a great honor to uh, host it. So uh, I will give the floor and start with uh, institution. Fred Wutash. So you can uh, be there or you can be here. It's up to you. Uh, so. Good 
Good morning, time of the day. Excellent see, Master Mer. And I do the Better Foundation, director of the IWDF, time first, in the Northern University, distinguished participant. I welcome you and uh, I would like to thank organizers. I think it's privilege for me to be here with you, discuss uh, for the uh, future cooperation and collaboration between the organization of Turkic State that we work in Guinea. And the mention is how the way you went uh, because and her recently their European Commission President Charles Chef visited Central Asia, uh, Kazakhstan and Samarkand and first time EU Central Asia Summit was held uh, months ago and in these days yesterday and today in Uzbekistan and Samarkand uh, European High Representatives Joseph Foray uh, it's an and then there is a conference uh, of uh, in connectivity between Central Asia and the uh, European Union. Uh, when I get the invitation uh, with the uh, subject of exploring partnership opportunities between the UN Organization of Turkey States, uh, I just realized how European Union ignore or neglect or doesn't pay, pay attention uh, or doesn't give importance to the organization of Turkish space because uh, one of the member of organization of Turkish states member of European Union Hungary uh, observed has an observed status in uh, organization of Turkish states another member of Organization took space is the candidate of the European Union and as a custom union with the EU, Turkey. Another uh, member of organization of Turkey states, uh, partner of uh, European Union, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, part of the uh, European Union, Eastern member, Eastern partnership uh, program. So recently, in uh, 2019, European Union has published strategic concept on Central Asia. So all of this uh, region and countries, Central Asia, South Caucasus, Turkey, united with the uh, name of Organization of Turkic States. So when the uh, European Union Eastern Partnership and the uh, Central Asian uh, Initiative, which had recently more visibly considered, Organization of Turkic States become a very uh, useful partner, uh, actually. But uh, Yesterday, uh, Boran mentioned about the Turkey, Turkey, but just uh, talked about the green deal with uh, Russia. Just, just uh, I uh, read his speech, and he uh, uh, correctly uh, pointed out that uh, Central Asia as a region was nowhere recently, but right now, Right now, uh, he's angry that uh, such a uh, quotation from his uh, speech. But, uh, it, it, actually, he is right. Only this year, there is many uh, summit, international uh, organization, and uh, high level visit to the Central Asia. Uh, recently, on uh, night of the November, there was. Summit of the Organization of Turkish States. Before that, in American uh, Summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And uh, and recently, 
Russia also held the first time in this story, Russia and Central Asia summit in uh, Astana. Uh, beat the summit in, in March of the summit of Stika. So there is uh, many international actors and the organizations uh, now uh, focusing on the uh, Central Asia. And Turkey both is the uh, top of the uh, agenda, actually. So when we talk about the Turkey world, it was uh, considered as a uh, romantic and sentimental approach of uh, Turkey in 1990s. But right now, Turkey growth considered as the realistic geopolitical uh, structure. So, uh, if there is a uh, union, there is a uh, realistic uh, structure, it's uh, difficult to understand how the European Union uh, closed its eyes to do this uh, geopolitical uh, structure. Actually, actually, uh, we can say this is a, a blind, uh, geopolitical blindness mainly for, uh, for, for the, the European Union. The, when we uh, look at the history of the European Union and the Turkish states, uh, it's already more than 30 years has uh, passed from the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, today, and today, we celebrated 30 years of the diplomatic relations between EU and the uh, Turkish states, and if we uh, look at the history, there was many grand strategy of the European towards the Turkish states. One of them, Prasekat in 1990s. Uh, if you check the uh, academic article written in the 1990s, you will see it. Prasekat, Pakis. Transport corridor from Asia to Europe, in the say card. Like is the uh, technical and development uh, program of the European Union towards the former Soviet Unions. And uh, recent uh, in the 20s, Namco project, the uh, energy project from uh, East to the Europe, from Caucasus to the Europe. Innogates. That is uh, many kind of project from the European uh, side on the uh, connectivity, on human rights, on democratic transition for uh, governance, etc. But after 30 years, when we uh, look at this, all of this project, uh, we can say this is and the uh, field of the foreign policy of uh, EU, because none of them, none of them was realized and actual him uh, today. But if we set the 30 years of uh, between the Turkey and the other Turkish countries, we, we see uh, and we talk today middle corridor, transportation corridor, starting from China to Europe, railways and uh, pipelines and uh, digital uh, connectivity, etc. And of, co of course, there is also a social uh, aspect of this connectivity. There are many uh, student mobility between Turkey and the uh, Turkish states, many cultural uh, connectivity among the Turkic countries. So, organization of Turkic states is the result of this 30 years uh, high intense intensity connectivity. So, well, if they uh, look from the positive side, thanks to the Turkish uh, 
uh, efforts, the European Union come closer to the Central Asia. And uh, Michel told about uh, it uh, months ago in the Astana, uh, Central Asia and European Union getting closer his uh, cooperation. But it's uh, obvious thanks to the Turkey's effort for uh, building railways, Baku, Tiflis cars, and Marmara, and other infrastructure uh, for transportation. So Central Asia uh, and the European Union getting closer to all Turkey. And with the pipeline of Baku, Tiflis, Seyhan, it was uh, start operate in 2005. And the European market getting uh, oil from Azerbaijan through this uh, pipeline more than 50 years. And uh, after the uh, Russian aggression to the uh, Ukraine and uh, after the uh, Western uh, sanction against uh, Russia, uh, Turkic world we found the alternative for the solution uh, of the energy need of the Europe. So, uh, even before we talked about the Novoco, we were talking about the trans Anatolian pipeline and trans Adriatic pop pipeline. So, all of this connectivity structure with doing the 30 years of the cooperation among the Turkish states. Uh, in this days, Turkish states uh, following their cooperation as the model of the European Union. Their aim is to become an uh, integ integration uh, among the Turkish uh, countries because uh, Usable in Istanbul summit, uh, except that the uh, 2040 strategic vision of the Turkic world. And uh, this strategic vision established the basic rule of the cooperation and the future prospect of this uh, cooperation. If we uh, uh, fight the uh, a realistic dialogue, and uh, if you find the uh, realistic uh, discussion between the European Union and the uh, OGS, such as this event, I think this is very important and very uh, good model for the further step. We will uh, find the uh, opportunities for the uh, exploring partnership between Europe and uh, the international uh, organization of Turkish states. So, uh, we will go on discussion. Uh, I will summarize, I, I, I try to summarize my points of view. It's obvious the European Union ignoring or neglecting the, the OTS uh, after this kind of uh, discussion, uh, I think all parts will see the benefit of the uh, cooperation. Just one concrete example. Example: Next month, in the beginning of the December, uh, President Erdogan announced that will be theoretical summit in Turkmenistan, Ashgabat. This presidential summit uh, planned after the uh, long uh, work which uh, uh, done by the mi foreign minister level. Uh, Turkey, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan held the uh, five summit in uh, all the levels of foreign ministries. And after this uh, uh, long-lasting 
uh, Air Force Presidential Summit will be held next month. And this summit maybe will give a chance uh, to, to, to replace that, sell their uh, gas to the uh, Turkey and to the uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, thanks to the, these efforts, Turkmenistan and Azerbaijan solved their territorial uh, problem in the Caspian Sea. So now they operate in, uh, together uh, some natural gas uh, base, basin uh, and they pull it as a friendship those look. This is the one of the concrete example of the uh, cooperation among the Turkey states. And uh, all of these airports, if supported by the European Union and the other uh, Western partners of the uh, Organization of, of Turkey states, it will uh, contribute to the energy security of the European Union and energy security of the uh, world. So there is many uh, fear for the cooperation. Uh, just we need to see each other as a real partner, strategic partner, and European Union should realize their uh, members and their uh, candidates and their partners' uh, potential for the future cooperation. Uh, that's all for now. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Frato John. As you mentioned, uh, the EU centers Asia relations is not a new endeavor. Actually, uh, in the last 30 years, there are certain efforts and, uh, that, you know, important uh, initiatives. Uh, and however, the acceleration of this interaction has just recently been uh, substantiated. And you mentioned some of the real, uh, you know, concrete potential of this uh, of cooperation. So I would like to thank you about uh, this uh, brief background. Now I'm going to give the floor to uh, the Professor Yashar Sader. So he will make some uh, analysis about the, the geopolitical aspect of this uh, cooperation. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Satar uh, Brussels office uh, organizing this uh, panel. And uh, we are happy to be a uh, part of with uh, them. Hopefully we will continue uh, this kind of panels and seminars uh, related to the organization of the Turkic state and other opportunities related to the Turkic world. Uh, also, I would like to uh, thank you to you, uh, all audience uh, coming here, attending this uh, seminar. Hopefully, we will have, uh, at the end, a uh, fruitful uh, discussion. Um, before me, uh, the ambassador was I and the professor uh, uh, Purtash talk, so it's uh, I will try to make my uh, presentation a little bit di different, but uh, I will also touch the similar point. Uh, my presentation has uh, uh, three main uh, parts. First is the, uh, what kind of uh, role the European Union can play, what kind of uh, policies they have related to uh, Turkey world, and this is including Azerbaijan and the for the Turkic state in Central Asia. Uh, then I will talk about the, uh, what is the similarities and differences between the uh, EU and the, the organization of the uh, Turkic state region uh, related to the same region. At the end, then uh, I will talk about the possible, um, uh, possible opportunities. And also, let's not forget, so the certain obstacles uh, having the relation between these uh, two organizations. Um, Fifteen years ago, I was, when I was teaching uh, in Central Asia on Central Asian politics, I asked the student 
uh, which organization you think that the uh, example for Central Asian countries to be united to in, 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 create uh, integrate each other? Almost all of them say that the example is the European Union. So most of them is the envy to European uh, structure and institution. Um, but the, uh, as we know, uh, and in that time, uh, when we, as a Turkey, uh, a Turkey uh, a long time in the, that region, I have the close relation with the, uh, the Central Asian uh, state and Azerbaijan, but EU, um, EU uh, of course, established relations with the those countries uh, almost 30 years ago, but they never include the, uh, Turkey when they have the, uh, this cooperation or the programs, anything related to uh, Azerbaijan and the Central Asia. In 2000, I tell you the example, 2006-2007, the only organization which is including uh, uh, Turkey and when they had relation with the uh, Central Asia in that time is the NATO. So the NATO organizes the different activities. NATO's years and officers represented by the uh, Turkish diplomats. And that way, through Turkish uh, amenities, they established the relation. Even though uh, 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 not only is the uh, uh, Turkic uh, state of the community is the uh, they prefer to have the EU's as a model of integration. Uh, EU uh, accepted uh, normative issues. EU not that we connect them to the act also getting assistance to uh, Turkey in that sense. So uh, EU's uh, integration is an example of the uh, Turkic uh, countries. Why? This, uh, this integration, EU integration, takes the... the um, uh, grow economically, uh, uh, taking step uh, by step uh, action in certain area. So that is uh, that. In that sense, is we can see that uh, there is a kind of uh, you can be uh, playing with uh, a simple role. Even these days, uh, um, he is uh, uh, officials who are responsible for uh, this region, like Borales or the visiting uh, uh, delegation who are visiting uh, Central Asian countries, when they are when, uh, talking about the digitalization, the connectivity, sustainable connectivity, transport connectivity, uh, other things, we see the similar language also in the, the organization of the Turkic state too. Digitalization, uh, be it, uh, be, uh, green, um, the energy and so on. So it actually, the uh, both the uh, EU and the uh, organization of the Turkic state have similar uh, vision and similar issue area. Um, already, uh, and Master uh, Bozai, uh, Bozai and uh, Professor Putash also mentioned uh, how you can connect the EU with the Central Asian Azerbaijan. If you don't use the Russia, which is uh, one reason why the EU is de-emphasizing on the sustainable connectivity. Uh, 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 and if you, if you not uh, use the Russia, we, how you can connect the, uh, the, the Central Asia, Azerbaijan with the, uh, uh, with the European, country, European Union countries on the ways to Turkey. So that is the showing that Turkey and the uh, Turkey, uh, uh, as well as the Turkic state and EU, uh, have a mutual interest. Even uh, looking from different perspective, but still there's a mutual inter interest. Already, uh, Mr. also mentioned about EU and Turkey, as well as the other regional countries, they want to have peaceful, stable condition. So that may, uh, they can uh, have a, a benefit from the uh, this condition. So uh, to create a stable and peaceful condition, only way to having the inter con uh, high interconnectivity. And that is the only true uh, uh, Turkey is possible. Uh, there are several questions, which is the, uh, I'm going back to a little bit uh, uh, my um, uh, topic area, 
Um, how the EU can play as an example role? We need to answer the several questions, maybe not uh, this uh, presentation. If someone asks uh, in the uh, question answer session, I, I will I can elaborate more on that one. What were the conditions made it uh, regional integration possible in Europe and how we can uh, uh, apply or uh, apply that uh, condition for the uh, uh, organization of the Turkic state. Second, uh, the, what are uh, those conditions present in the uh, Turkic world today? So when we looking at bit, uh, the early stage of the, the integration process starting from the uh, late 40s, uh, the 1940s, by the way, uh, 19, early 1950s, they started from the uh, a, a certain uh, specific uh, economic uh, uh, industrial area. And they started, uh, so that way, uh, similar kind of things also uh, we can see in the, to the Turkic world. Last year, when they, uh, they, the organization of the Turkic state declared the, uh, 2000, uh, the uh, 2040 uh, Turkic world region, if you look at the those issues, uh, most of them is related economic uh, issues. Uh, and, uh, a bit, I think the of them is the uh, related economic issues. Those are the economic cooperation, transportation, and custom, information, communication, technology, uh, digitalization, and energy. You can see the same language uh, in EU documents. So, but when you're looking at the EU strategy, uh, in the uh, strategy paper, both 2007, 2019, you don't see that much. The uh, I mean, nowhere you can see that uh, the name of the Turkey mentioned. So then, what's the problem uh, in that sense? Uh, the EU is not the mentioning the uh, Turkey. This is for probably related to uh, the structure of the EU. Uh, anarchical centralization of the power in the EU, the role of the uh, pre preeminence role of the uh, large member state in the making of the EU's foreign policy, as well as the uh, spoiling forces, some small state like the uh, Greeks, uh, Cyprus, and the Greece uh, um, taking position related to uh, Turkey, negative position, of course, uh, specific issue. And recently we saw that the French Senate uh, call, which is the irresponsible statement uh, for the sanction on the Azerbaijan and the recognition of the uh, to so-called uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, both EU rejection, uh, the, the EU's statement related uh, the acceptance of the Turkish Republic of Northern uh, Cyprus as an observer status. If you're looking at the official document, it's not saying observant uh, state, observer status, even though that is the, uh, rejected by the EU. How we can overcome this kind of uh, problem? First, if the EU wants to have a sustainable connectivity, uh, the benefit from the energy resources, which is the uh, Central Asia and Azerbaijan has, need to develop a strong and close relation to Turkey. How they can do? But the example is that uh, these days the EU is renewing the custom union agreement. I mean, still uh, this process started but not co completed. So custom union an agreement with Turkey can include the uh, the, uh, the, the organization of Turkic states too. So that is the uh, that way to EU create the opportunity to open the uh, dialogue, open the uh, uh, door which is having been not just a single uh, relation, bilateral economic relation with the Turkey, but they uh, make the broader. Why EU is need? I mean, the EU need because uh, in 2021, uh, the EU, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen presented the idea, which is called the EU Global Gateway, but in her uh, State of the Union, she claimed that it was the EU's new flagship strategy. As we know, why the uh, global gateway are uh, the strategy and the, the um, uh, preserved the because of the, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. 
So the Chinese back up an initiative very successfully in certain areas, not all of them, but at least in Central Asia, uh, we see the, the Chinese uh, economic influence increased through this bad, bad and road initiative, which China's president Xi Jinping started this uh, um, the process uh, from uh, Astana, uh, Kazakhstan. So this uh, the global uh, gateway is the, the increasing the infest uh, to uh, and the the busy people, the digital debate, transportation, energy, water issues. So the EU wants to invest those areas to make the EU more uh, sustainably connected uh, energy resources countries and it also open the, uh, the EU more to the uh, true to Asia. As we know, the world center, economy and political center is moving from the Atlantic to Pacific uh, uh, and the best way to in the land base, the con Connect uh, that region to China is through uh, Central Asia, the Caucasus, plus Turkey, Azerbaijan, and the Central Asian country. So, uh, in that sense, is EU wants to develop this global gateway, and I'm, I'm not sure they can compete with the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. But if they want to have the uh, at least in a certain advantage, they need to uh, closely uh, cooperate with the Turkey. And the uh, in that sense, uh, uh, so the last things I want uh, in that sense, uh, the, the e ECU that I mean uh, the, the last uh, uh, summit of the uh, organization of the Turkish state, they mentioned uh, about the uh, the uh, the middle uh, corridor and the the investing that and they uh, the organization established. Uh, a Turkish investment fund. EU can uh, uh, support that fund to uh, the project, which is the related supply chain, energy, invest structure investment related uh, Turkey, Caucasus, I mean the uh, uh, Caucasus and the Central Asia. When I say the Caucasus, uh, intentionally I say not only Azerbaijan but that Armenia too. EU. One area you play a positive role, bringing the uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia uh, side to talking about it, solving the deal problem, and that giving the opportunity opening the Zengezur corridor, which is not only connected Turkey to Azerbaijan to Central Asia, but also uh, help the, the, the EU uh, countries to connecting through Turkey and Azerbaijan to uh, Central Asia. So that way, there's it. A common um, uh, benefit uh, we can see. In that sense, I can uh, because here is the representative of Hungary here. So Hungary can play a role in connecting uh, European Union at the, the uh, Turkey and the organization of the Turkic state. So that way, uh, both sides can uh, benefit. Of course, the only full for potential can be accomplished. Uh, through the trans uh, Caspian East West Middle Corridor. This corridor is not only transportation of the good, but also uh, to uh, energy resources. As we know, uh, recently when uh, the uh, German uh, foreign minister, later the Charles Michels, went to Kazakhstan talking about the hydrogen and other energy resources to transferring from those countries uh, to EU. Again, the question is coming half. And uh, that's, uh, let me complete the, uh, my presentation. So, the, Turkey is the middle country. If EU wants to have the real concrete steps, not only uh, uh, strategies on the paper, uh, concrete steps need to uh, cooperate uh, with the Turkey as well as the organization of the Turkic state. The organization is that just turned it as a uh, full-fledged uh, organization last November 2021. Uh, but uh, has, if you're looking at the old vision paper or the last Samarkand declaration of the ninth uh, summit of the, uh, the organization of Turkic state, we can see that very comprehensive uh, plan, a uh, project uh, is there. But the only problem is they who will finance that one. EU is a potential candidate in that sense. Thank you uh, for listening to me.
uh, after the question answer session, we can uh, talk more detail. Uh, thank you very much, Yashar Jan. Especially you, your emphasis on potential of this corridor and uh, EU OTS cooperation in, uh, in terms of resolving some existing problems and uh, stimulating new uh, cooperation opportunities was uh, very important. So I think this, uh, you know, geopolitically, there are certain definite risks, but at the same time, this potential of this cooperation in may also stimulate modernization of custom union as well as cooperation in different uh, areas. So our third uh, speaker will be uh, Ms. Esmira uh, Jafarova. So she will also highlight some of the energy aspect of this uh, operation. Thank you very much for having me and I want to thank the organizers for this event, how which is very timely. Um, previous speakers, they touched upon uh, lots of areas of uh, cooperation between the European Union and the British and Turkic states, and some of the most mentioned issues related to energy, which I'm going to focus small, mostly. Um, well, it's clear that there is lots of the area for cooperation and lots of potential to be explored. And um, I'm sure that it was countries that have joined uh, within the organization of the state state um, had this vision and expectations of building closer, better and integrated Turkic world that will promote the cooperation in many issue areas. And many of the speakers also spoke about the Turkic uh, vision document of 2040, which lays out lots of areas for closer integration and uh, cooperation and amongst them it, there is also a uh, point uh, let's say subdivision related to energy which uh, focuses on how to build strategic partnerships among the member states of the organizational traffic states in order to uh, better coordinate the policies promotion of energy trade investments and joining forces in in, in, in fostering uh, research and technological cooperation in order to uh, provide secure and a competitive, affordable energy to most member states of this organization. As well as, uh, there is also a consideration within the organization about how to um, ensure better cooperation and cultivation among the member states uh, for energy diversification and clean, clean energy, uh, particularly in the field of renewable energy, which is, um, they call it energy resources of the future, but mm -hmm. there are some researchers I agree with it, but I also say that, well, listen, hydrocarbon resources will still be relevant in the decades to come, but yes, and renewable energy is the energy for the sources of Europe, so, uh, of future, excuse me. So, but therefore, the organization of Turkic states is also thinking of how to um, foster better cooperation in the field of renewable energy, and such as solar, bioenergy, wind, nuclear, uh, through the joint investment, knowledge, experience and as well as the know-how exchanges. So I think that's um, also testifying to the fact that there is already a strategic vision in regard to uh, building a better cooperation in the field of energy. Uh, and also the document uh, focuses on how to better institutionalize uh, energy cooperation and build uh, integrated Turkic energy markets. And that's something that uh, the countries are looking forward towards 2040, and that's I, I think that's very serious. When you look at how energy actually is uh, playing increasingly, has always did that play, but still playing increasingly important role in the energy and as well as political geopolitics of the wider regions and the particularly the geographics that we're living in. And uh, uh, there is also a vision on how to establish closer cooperation with international actors, including but not limited to international energy agency. I'm sure you have Kenya you know, is, is amongst them. Um, but um, this is a vision of the uh, organization itself about how they want their energy cooperation to continue uh, and move into the future. But energy cooperation is not something new among the organization of Turkic states. And I want to focus on how Azerbaijan and uh, Turkey 
for that matter, have fostered their close cooperation in the field of energy. And you know, Azerbaijan started um, opening up to the world after the 1994 signing of the contract of century and exporting its energy, most of the other sources to the world, which later was also extended to the natural gas resources. And in 2013, the Thousand Gas Corridor became uh, started to be built. And it became a creation of 2020, uh, December 31st. The first gas was already pumped through the Thousand Gas Corridor. And uh, there are four branches of the Southern Gas Corridor, the uh, Japanese uh, two field, uh, Japanese field, which is so ser serving as a source of uh, the gas resources that has to be uh, pumped to Europe, which are already being pumped to Europe, transported to Europe. And there is TANA, trans pipeline, there is Southern uh, Caspian uh, pipeline, SCP, and there is TAP, which is the last segment, last leg of the Southern Gas Corridor, basically. This is the uh, vision of well, the existing infrastructure that unites Azerbaijan with Europe. And that goes through the territory of four of seven countries, including uh, European countries, Turkey, Georgia, and Albania, Greece, Bulgaria, Italy. Um, basically, uh, that's the scheme, that the schedule of how uh, the kind of gas is being exported to Europe, but that's most of the technical side of the issue. When you look at the issue from a strategic and political perspective, um, it has much broader implications. Even so, if you transfer it to how uh, the Turkic world can cooperate and connect to EU countries, to European countries, and that's where it all starts, basically. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea is uh, that uh, this successful cooperation model that Azerbaijan has built with Turkey is to be also extended to the cooperation within the entire organization of the Turkic states. And Azerbaijan also has a very good uh, partnership when it comes to energy. It's cooperating with Kazakhstan, it's cooperating with Uzbekistan. We certainly would have signed a roadmap for Uzbekistan on cooperating in certain different areas. And it's cooperating with Turkmenistan. Somebody mentioned about the Dostluk fields, which has been already solved and it was the question debatable for many years, but it has already been resolved as well. And um, uh, where it comes to, uh, I think about what Julie mentioned, but I would like to mention this too, Trans Caspian Pipeline, which is really the, let's say, bone of contention, or, or I mean, not bone of contention, but it was under discussion for several years um, how to make sure that this. Uh, gas from the Kumedistan also travels to Europe and how to make sure that greater neighborhood gets this gas as, as well. Um, uh, there was, uh, I think, some political consideration, geopolitical consideration, why this Trans-Caspian pipeline is not happening, uh, why they want it, but at the same time, they're not really invested in it. And they, uh, there were also questions when I used to work in the Ministry of Energy. I also worked for the Ministry of Energy for two years. I was advisor to the minister, and I um, encountered lots of cases when the, the um, uh, representatives of foreign countries, for example, especially European countries, uh, they were bringing up this question, uh, what do you think about the perspectives of trans and pipeline? And our response was, well, you know, if your Kenya wants it, if Turkmenistan wants to cooperate, then Azerbaijan can only support it. There is an infrastructure, there is Sassan um, the gas corridor. It's in place. And if anyone wants to use it, we're always welcoming to include them. So uh, the idea is if European Union wants to be invested enough and wants to be more connected uh, to cooperating with the countries of the Turkic world, let's put it this way, and we bring gas from Turkmenistan to Europe because they need it, right? And Turkmenistan also wants to cooperate. Azerbaijan will only support this. So uh, what I'm saying is there is potential there as well to increase and even further deepen the energy cooperation and potential of, uh, let's say, more extended, let's say, um, uh, cooperation in future with the European Union. It's the European Union will be more invested. And that's the idea because I think um, there's a tendency of tiptoeing around when it comes to being really invested and, uh, you know, laying long-term investments and committing the long-term 
to hydrocarbon resources. And I'm sure most of you have heard about this European Union strategy paper, which by 50, 2050, it was supposed to uh, wean themselves off of all the hydrocarbon projects and mostly invest in renewables. And they were not going to invest in any projects when it comes to hydrocarbons. And uh, again, long-term projects on hydrocarbons was kind of off the list. For EU, I think the war in Ukraine must have changed the bigger picture. And uh, there is an understanding that, uh, well, it's not there yet. And renewable energy, despite being the energy sources of Europe, still not really um, the fully, let's say, uh, possible or potential or full force replacement of the hydrocarbon resources, the special natural gas, which is also needed for energy transition. Because energy transition, yes, but natural gas is needed for energy transition. And for that, you need investment. For that, you need long-term uh, projects and commitment on the part of the European Union. And I think that's the part where European Union is having troubles because they want to have it all, but not uh, for the long-term commitment. So I think about um, that issue is being also brought to the attention of the European Union. And recently, uh, there was a memorandum of understanding that was signed between Azerbaijan and the European Union about uh, doubling the volumes of gas that Azerbaijan is exporting to EU um, by 2027. Uh, the volumes is to be reached about 20 billion. Uh, and it could be even more, but this is the, let's say, strategic uh, roadmap. Uh, how well, as a general European Union would like to go with that. I'd like also to give you some numbers about um, what what's the situation going to. For example, during January and October 2020 this year, gas export grew by 17.4% and 9.3 BCM of gas was exported to Europe and 6.9 BCM to Turkey, to Turkey and 2 BCM to Georgia. So Azerbaijan is actually exporting more than it is initially committed. And this memorandum of understanding that was signed, which supposes to expand the, the gas exports by 2027, the volumes could be higher. We're just giving the reasonable number, uh, which is 20 uh, this year. And during 10 months of this year, 21.9 uh, out of 27.2 billion, million tons of extracted oil was exported in Azerbaijan, and compared to the same period last year, 18.2 out of 38.4 BCM gas produced with an increase of 7.3% was exported. So exports are increasing, but we cannot uh, underline this enough, that we need more investment, but it war commitment, and uh, we need to understand that this is long term. It's not like we do it now, we start digging down and exporting the energy and tomorrow European Union brings up, uh, let's say, a different kind of vision, which says that, you know, we don't need your guts tomorrow, something like that. So it should be a um, two-way street. And if uh, energy cooperation, which is actually except I believe and I think that everyone believes a successful model of cooperation between Azerbaijan, Turkey, and potentially which could be expanded to other members of the organization of big states is something that is mostly revival, strategic, that EU cherishes on, especially in the times of crisis, they should also be able to commit to this. Um, that's the idea that I think everyone should be um, mindful of. Well, there were two meetings of energy working group uh, of the organization of Turkic states, which happened, one happened last year, February, and the other one happened this year, September. And uh, there were lots of issues discussed, particularly those that I mentioned in the beginning, uh, how to uh, increase the energy partnerships, especially when it comes to renewables, especially when it comes to attraction of modern technologies and investment opportunities. And in order to increase the invest investment climate as well, energy efficiency, and how to increase the exchange of uh, experience in the field and uh, to create the joint the training center, for example, in the field of energy. So I think there's lots of lots of ideas that are being currently discussed, and it's everything is doable, especially it's in the uh, vision document 2040. So 
I think this is one of the most perspective areas uh, where the organization itself can, can flourish and also increase its partnership with the European Union, later probably moving toward political, more, more high level, let's say, issues that demand a more focused uh, and intense, let's say, uh, cooperation partnerships or negotiations, you name it. So um, what I'm trying to say is EU itself has thrived on the idea of energy cooperation, coal and steel energy. And uh, this is the idea that could actually also flourish between the organization of Turkic states and the European Union uh, in order to uh, foster better cooperation in the future. Um, well, again, uh, there's also an idea of how to improve cooperation not only in the field of hydrocarbons, but also in the field of electricity expansion and export. Uh, because Azerbaijan is also an exporter of electricity. We're doing this with Georgia, we've been doing this with Russia, and currently there is a project on building the subsea uh, transmission electricity belts uh, that would go through the Black Sea to uh, uh, Georgia, to uh, Turkey, and later to uh, the European countries. And I think that's one of the areas where the Organization of Turkic States and European Union can find a niche to cooperate. And then the desert corridor somebody mentioned before me is a perfect location where this transmission, electricity transmission belts uh, could be built and uh, could be further expanded. And this cooperation could be, as I said, taken to the next level. So again, it's not on the hydrocarbons, it's also the electricity, which is no less important than, than the hydrocarbons. Um, and I believe that that's something that is also kind of under discussion. Um, and as I said, I think those are corridors. Uh, I can talk about uh, in terms of geopolitics and in terms of, uh, let's say, connectivity, how important this is. But I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it because I, I was told that she's so positive about energy, so focusing on energy. But the thing is, the corridor is not only important in terms of uh, trans, uh, that's connectivity, building connectivity, or uh, making sure that energy exports go smoothly. It is also important in terms of uniting the Turkey world. And there is uh, already an idea that this corridor would be uniting the Turkic world. And that's why, for example, uh, Armenia is not so much happy when it comes to the Indies of Corridor. For instance, Iran is also not so happy when it comes to the Indies of Corridor. Because the idea is it will unite and consolidate uh, the cooperation and make the connectivity much easier through the entire Turkic world. So we have to uh, be mindful of the importance, strategic importance of this very corridor when it comes to fostering multi-layered cooperation in, amongst the Turkic countries, and not only in terms of energy, but in a, in a broader perspective. So, uh, well, again, uh, with that, I'd like to actually conclude because uh, uh, I mostly underlined the most important fields and directions when it comes to energy. Um, a thousand gas corridor is operational. It is important. It has lots of potential. It was built with an idea that it will be an expandable diversification network, meaning that if there is a need, as I said before, their capacity could be expanded. TANAP could be expanded twice, um, to up to 32 BCF, for example. Now it's 16. TAP could be expanded twice, up to 20. So it means that there is lots of area for uh, potential cooperation and expansion. And if there are more volumes that are to become from Central Asia, from um, other, other uh, what, Turk, uh, Turkic, uh, let's say, partner countries, Azerbaijan is ready because the, the infrastructure is there. But EU should also be run. That should be a uh, two-way street. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Espira Jafarova. So you really highlighted that one of the most studied research areas of this cooperation is related to uh, energy. And, uh, you know, uh, you also highlighted the significance of the Zengezur Corridor. 
uh, and also uh, the potential for further uh, developing the existing uh, channels. And it's the, the, the other important highlight I think was that the potential for this cooperation also helps to resolve some of the disputes among the members of the Organization of Turkish State uh, countries. So this is also very important. So thank you for this presentation. Now I'm gonna switch to this take uh, take them. She has been organizing many events in Brussels about uh, the Turkic state's cultural diplomacy. So she will also share uh, her experience. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then, dear distinguished guests, your excellencies, and it's a great pleasure to be here at this conference, uh, especially today we have the Samarkand and Connectivity Summit again now, right now in Samarkand. And dear colleagues from EAS, ENC, and many thanks to all of you that being with us today. So thank you, uh, Mr. Kose, uh, as you have mentioned that actually I would like to start uh, uh, my words with in this house and talk, uh, we have organized for the first time a promoting of Turkey culture, and it was about us two years ago. Uh, so we try to, in fact, uh, promote for the first time of the Halta Turkey cultural heritage to the Europeans. And many thanks to Hassan Güven worked closely with us. And this was our first initiative and it continued. And last year we managed to organize similar activities in, in Bursa, about Bursa in the European Parliament. And we will be also continuing with Kazakhstan afterwards, Azerbaijan. The idea is, in fact, that me being, uh, my name is Ipek, is being, um, as you all know, the main silk and connecting east to west and west to east. And I think it is very, very timely that we can also continue to promote this region to the European Union by using not only hard politics and thanks to many speakers that they have mentioned that all these um, uh, projects that are ongoing projects or blockages, but we have to find a way to collaborate together. I believe that you all know, uh, of course, the world today is increasingly entering in an era of the artificial intelligence technology. And let me remind you that artificial intelligence is, in fact, it's consists of algorithms. So the father of algor an algebra born in the Hiva, so the, in the city of Hiva. Uh, and also let me remind you also, it is now is uh, recognized today and well know one of the greatest pioneers in, in the field of medicine and philosophy. So uh, this is why the issue is I'm trying to explain today the idea is not we are trying to build the bridges. So we try to repair and also restore the bridge that has been already existing centuries. So that's why I would like to start with the mentioning of the role of the Turkic space in this sense. So three decades of close relations in the Turkic world have brought us and about several platforms, especially to collaborate in the common uh, cultural basis. So we are talking about a GDP and representing a GDP of $4 trillion. And this Turkey region, in fact, is in the heart of Eurasian geography. And let's, let's not forget that at the heart of the crossroads of the south, south north, and the east-west corridors of the ancient Silk Road. Thanks to their historical, linguistic, uh, and brotherly and cultural ties and unique uh, geographical position, a united Turkic front is emerging as a new geopolitical reality for the European Union as well. This promises uh, to produce tangible political economic results while producing to peace, security, especially stability in the Eurasian continent and beyond. As we know, OTC is dating back to 1990s that all speakers have measured. It is a perfect tool which sets the rules of collaboration in the Turkic region. Relying on the continuous political will uh, of its member states, this solid framework has already achieved good results within the short period of time. So when it comes to, yes, political level of cooperation, economic, so on and so forth, but here we should also not underestimate that the Turkic co cooperation uh, not only at the political level, but also cultural, scientific, as well as the academic level. Uh, let me focus on here, particularly on the Turkic cultural heritage. As, uh, as again, I would like to mention, I may be one of the few ladies in the EU who promotes 
the region quite uh, intensively here. And then uh, culture always has been uh, the paramount factor in, in protecting, advancing civilizations uh, since the ancient times. It is well known that the ancient Turkic land has been connecting east-west for thousand years. This brought the world civilizations closer to each other and reaching various cultures. It is cru crucial uh, for us to preserve it, perhaps, and, and also build also more connections and study it and promote it and, and to pass this cultural heritage to the next generations. So international organizations should do that, as we have the former deputy secretary of Tukso is here. I'm sure they have done in the past 10 years many works to promote uh, this uh, culture. This way, I believe that we can create necessarily friendly ties between different cultures, interacting with especially other civilizations and drawing uh, partners and uh, finding common points of view. I think what is missing is being a Turkish lady and working in the EU. When I was in the West, I'm missing the East. When I'm in the East, I'm missing the West. So what I came up, that we have to find a commonality, and there are so many. I am sure my colleague in the EAS, uh, they are working hard to find a way to collaborate these regions. But we need to think about not only from the one side, and so far we have received very negative comments to the European Union that I would like to object to this, in fact, that because I think European Union has been already working with many regional uh, cooperation centers, for example, Black Sea Economic Cooperation. So Turkic states, yes, should have started, but maybe we should not think about only one side. We need to maybe find the commonality to work together I was the one, again, first lady who promoted the European universities in Central Asia. So I did this full project, which was founded by the European Union. And it was the idea of promoting the mobility, international exchanges of experiences. But let's face it, back then we had some problems because we wanted to promote the, the students' mobility. In fact, the problem was that the universities or the high schools were not accredited to the European system. So let's think about also how we can also reform ourselves. So our, our system, that we should focus on maybe to thinking about at the multilateral uh, level to uh, create more corporations. So when it comes to, as I said, the Silk Road, as from my heart that I can speak maybe hours, um, and Silk Road obviously is now very important. Uh, roads and settlement within the Turkic world, both in ancient times and subsequent periods, have always been important. And now today, we are also seeing uh, its importance. And the role of the Silk Road is one of the oldest means of communication, not only for trade, it's also for culture. And so, especially culture and tourism development. I was in Hiba two years ago presenting my paper of the, the another method of how we can use more European Union funds, European Union investment funds in the Silk Road heritage and in order to promote tourism in the region and sustainable tourism in this region. And not only that, but also how we can create more cooperation with the European Union as well as um, uh, skilling more youth uh, and women, empowerment, so on and so forth. Uh, we have discussed together with the UNESCO. So there are ways that already EU is invo involved and through UNESCO, through UN, and maybe it will happen with true Turkic states, but there are still existing efforts from both sides that I would like to also emphasize here. So historically, the people moving along this economic artery not only transported goods from the east to west or west to east, as I mentioned, and they brought also different cultures and different civilizations and understanding. So I want to also emphasize here, women played an important role in this. Uh, women in, the, in Central Asia is perhaps one well, of the main factors that kept the culture so, so uh, until today, up until today. So the ancient Sikh wrote was left in rich heritage in the history. Uh, today, many of the remains of ancient city are an integral part of the Turkic world and great Silk Road. Nowadays, 
all of us are going through the difficult trials related to um, geopolitical contradictions, the ongoing global crisis, uh, and the negative consequences of the climate change, the ongoing COVID pandemic has shocked the global health system in the last two years and has not bypassed by Turkic states. Obviously, Russia-Ukraine war, the current global instability, security concerns, and need to for energy cooperation that um, uh, Esmir Hanım well mentioned underlies the importance of regional organizations such as OTC. As a result of the circumstances presented by the Russian-Ukrainian war, the Turkic space are showing signs that they are expanding their cooperation and more inclined to grow closer to each other. As we mentioned, the Middle Corridor, both as regional economic zone compromising Central Asia, the Caucasus, and Turkey will contribute to European energy diversification by connecting Turkmenistan to the existing relatively Jeham and South Caucasus pipelines. Already, I am sure that also in, the, in you that there are some discussions about that how we can also uh, extend more energy diversification and support as well as uh, Georgia, Moldova, so on and so forth. And of course, there are so many things we can discuss here, but let's let's focus on that how we can work together and find that common dialogue to collaborate. Um, as we know that a couple of weeks ago that. The Northern Cyprus has been nominated as an observer member, uh, is created a big problem, as we all, let's face it. Um, but we need to find still a way to collaborate instead of focusing only on the problems. Uh, I'm sure that we can find plenty of opportunities to, to bring this organization closer to the European Union and other way around. We have tried even recently with Turksoy to connect them to the cultural capital, uh, the creative cultural capital programs in the European Union. And it was a first good initiative. It was a good first step that the general secretary visited also the EU officials and it was warmly welcome. Maybe not now, but we need to think a little bit more future and we need to start with the seeds now on, not to expect immediately. Um, so. That's why I'm sure that we can overcome any difficulties through our friendship, cooperation, and mutual understanding. So as always, I'd like to conclude um, uh, my often speeches um, by saying also using the proverbs in uh, proverb in Latin, uh, ex oriente lux, um, uh, as you know, shuk do dan doar. Let's focus on this and let the mia beyond the desk. So I think that I'm sure we can find many opportunities to work closer together. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. So well, the most significant achievements of the EU is the cooperation and collaboration in the areas of science, technology, and education. And you highlighted that there's huge potential in the organization of Turkish states among these issues. So in terms of stimulating mobility connectivity in different areas so this is very important and you practically try to do lots of activities thanks for that last but not least uh, we have uh, had a, uh, our dear uh, host he will also comment on some of the economic aspects okay Hello, it's been almost two hours, uh, but still I would like to start saying welcome to all of you, Mr. Ambassador, dear guests, valuable speakers, and thanks for being here and said that. Uh, Talha wanted me to say a few words. I accepted, although I'm not an expert of, on any of these issues, I'm a macroeconomist just watching the world and everybody around the stable knows much more than me about the global energy market, how it is reshaping, uh, what is the changing architecture of the market, etc. But still, since EU waited, I will be able to speak and share my humble opinion on some of these issues with this prestigious group. Uh, but let me already say that it will not be good news, much more a list of bad news. 
uh, we were living in peace really in the last 70 years. I have a map of European history showing the peace and war times. This is full of wars. And the last 70 years was the longest ever period of peace in European continent. Uh, but 270, 67, 267 days ago, suddenly woke up to a new world. Uh, believe me, uh, the world will be never come back. So we have to prepare ourselves for this. And let me start with energy. I guess we will experience another severe energy crisis worse than this in coming days. The reasons why I'm taking for this are um, manifold, actually. Firstly, the EU and US energy response to the grain crisis has not been well calculated in terms of boring effects and consequences. Until today, at least, intended results have not been achieved as energy investment and trade directed to uh, to east, to the dynamic eastern economies, Chinese and India. And in addition, the global economic depression will be further fueled by deglobalization. Today we are observing the economic nationalism and protectionism is rising and it will lead us to another depression. And it cannot be stopped only by central banks, investment rate increases. We have to do more. Uh, another thing is the uh, renewable and climate uh, energy, ch uh, climate change but the uh, Green Deal, uh, it will have a big one, really, uh, because transformation cannot happen overnight, and we couldn't start from a good point. And I guess the war we are in will uh, make the situation better in this field. Another bad news is about uh, China. I think there will likely be a bigger rest and fight with China down on the road, really. And it will not be as simple as Ukraine-Russia war. It will be in energy, geopolitics, technology, trade, space, cyberspace, cyber warfare, everything. The Ukraine crisis is only a precursor of what's to come with China. If you ask me, if the world is preparing itself for new world with full of words like war, crisis, inflation, depression, no good news. Uh, Ipek just told me we organized our first meeting two years ago. We repeated a couple of meetings. The subjects were uh, the cultural, cultural heritage, sharing the cultural heritage, etc. Tourism, education. Today we are talking about Crisis, 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 wherever we look, we see crisis. So we, as the West or Turkic states, uh, we shouldn't neglect. Uh, there's a bit of word outside and things are happening there. And these things are not in good direction. So let's prepare for the worst and let's do more. Uh, this is the message that I was like thinking for a time being, not directly connected to today's issue, but we cannot, we have to know that the world we will be, world we call, will be such a world in coming days. I just, I was talking to you, I consider myself lucky that most of my life uh, I spend in this peace period, but. Uh, especially for the young ladies and the Sumayi, hard days are waiting for all of us. Thank you.
So as a as the white person can brought up, I think your comments are very important because you have gone through very important periods in the Europe's capital. And as you mentioned, we have seen 70 years of peace, globalization and economic expansion. But uh, I think we have to be aware of this new era that may generate new difficulties. I think in that regard, your caution and your call for uh, further understanding and cooperation is very, very uh, important. I think this, these are the words of uh, wisdom which needs to be taken into uh, account. And we probably, as the experts, as policymakers, you know, policy analysts should, you know, reconsider our analysis on the basis of this, uh, I think, the, uh, the caution. We are heading to probably a more multipolar world, but it may be a little bit more painful. So this transition may be a painful. So this cooperation and efforts may probably reduce uh, the cost of this uh, transition. So I would now uh, would like to uh, open to discussion. I know that some of you have a uh, schedule, so we uh, pick uh, the scanner for you uh, because of another meeting. But I, I would like to turn this into more of the question plus comments, so I know that there are very malleable you know, experts here. Uh, so, Phil, those of who have other meetings can, uh, you know, leave. We will also have uh, lunch, but uh, for other than that, uh, I would like to give floor to comments for three, four minutes and questions to our uh, experts. I know that uh, they are very knowledgeable, so uh, they can also address some of the issues. Uh, so uh, we will probably have maybe 20 minutes discussion and we can continue the uh, lunch. Okay, so please wait then. So I will take a couple of comments, questions and give it to flow to uh, our experts, please. Yeah, thank you. I have learned a lot. That's a drug. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Fenian Kopp. I am the sub representative from the ERS. And of course, I have to answer also to the first uh, speaker. I want, um, but first of all, I want also correct um, the ambassador to mention that I am the constructor of this relationship. It's not so I'm uh, for Turkey um, competent. And because I see the importance of the, the Serb-Turk uh, states and OTS I mean here and I find this very interesting. I want also to say that you doesn't ignore the S not at all and it was already corrected by the other speakers. Yeah doing a lot, but of course, the uh, individual states are the primary um, counterparts of our funds, of our cooperation, and so on. I think the um, FOTS has a potential, he's an important partner, but um, it's not yet the direct counterpart for implementation of projects and so on. It's more the overhead, I would say. To have all the coherence of the projects, I don't think there is a very important place also. Yes. The connectivity was um, mentioned, a uh, global gateway. There are new initiatives of the EU, but they are still in development, actually. That is, I agree, a lot still to be done, and uh, it will be done because I don't see any uh, alternative. And I would also to come back to the, um, oh, yeah, the ambassador mentioned uh, 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 um, yeah, described it, concepts and the matrix 
This is absolutely right. Uh, Turku is indeed so oddly channel, which is Yabdal uh, nowadays. So from um, uh, so, so the future will go into this direction. And they mentioned also the cultural heritage, the pitch, which exists for existent already for centuries, actually, has maybe a little bit uh, sleeping the last decades during the uh, Soviet um, times. But uh, I think uh, it is waking up and, and uh, there is a big, thick potential. It's important also for stability in the region, in between China and Europe. And um, there's our big potential and the two point parts in the partnership. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. I'm the Hamir representative. Uh, first, so uh, let me echo away uh, the apologies of uh, Ambassador Founder to Blagi. He cannot be here due to other engagement. And uh, Dan, let me thank you for organizing this uh, event and uh, Thanks uh, for all the words uh, that mentioned uh, so far. Uh, actually, I couldn't agree more with you. So, uh, as my uh, as my minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and Mr. Peter Sieto said, the organization of the Turkic state is, is a forum for peace, where everyone everyone wants a, a peaceful solution to to the current crisis, to the war which is raging uh, in uh, in the prey. And uh, let me uh, once again highlight a very important fact. And it is uh, Turkey's role, especially Turkey's uh, role in uh, in mediation, because Turkey was the one which uh, successfully mediated between uh, between the uh, Ukrainians and uh, the Russians, and it it in, it is indeed uh, gave us a free trial uh, uh, result result which was the agree to to return to the, the um, grain deliveries, and that is a proof. That uh, if we really want, then there's a way forward in terms of uh, uh, reaching uh, peaceful solutions. But only, only if we cooperate with each other, if we listen to each other in a in a respectful way. So we believe that um, being open-minded is a way to to cooperate, and uh, cooperation is indeed an added value uh, in terms of uh, our security and uh, stability. And uh, finally, let me uh, let me emphasize that uh, Hungary, Hungarians uh, are ready to further uh, strengthen ties, uh, cooperation, and step up uh, our part uh, participation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comment, speaker. Any some there? I don't know. Is it all? Oh yeah. Then. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much uh, to all of you for. Uh, for uh, organizing this, especially to Tala and for Setha, as well as all the speakers. It was very interesting to listen to this, and I think um, Organization of Turkish State and European Union have a lot of scope uh, to work together. But um, my comment, and, and pretty much a question for all the speakers or anyone else who wish to answer this, is um, considering, first of all, Izmira uh, Yafarova's point, which I thought was very um, intelligent about perhaps the organization of Turkic states aiming for practical cooperation with the EU on areas that genuinely have high demand, like energy or electricity, or focusing on the rigid, the practical needs of the moment. Uh, so considering that point, and also considering the, the fact that I think both Ambassador and, and Halupe uh, mentioned uh, that there is a you know, potential clash with China being a few truth. Wait, I was on I was I was on the Cas Trudeau uh, China uh, event the other day, and I was talking about you know what will happen to to Volkswagen in China in ten years. Even the idea of Volkswagen pulling out is absurd. Will just be nationalized by China. So you know if it's not uh, are the warranted of messages, I think. But considering the fact that there are multiple corridors. And that there is not only the corridor in Central Asia for global trade is Africa, Morocco, France is investing in Morocco, but no one support that. There is, there is of course, the Middle Eastern corridor, which is in high competition. So considering the fact that that, uh, that that exists as well, does it then make sense for 
die, die old tweet is, um, does it then make sense to put such emphasis uh, on this observer status of more ciphers strategically? Because it, it, it will alienate, and it is alienated immediately. The EU, and we all know who it is and why and so forth, and I'm not here to argue right or wrong about that, far from it, but strategically, does that make sense at a moment where Turkey and also the organization of Turkey states and Azerbaijan and, and all the others are really having an advantage. Thank you. Thank you. Any question and comments? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ralph Uh I'm a, a master's student in ULP, and I'm uh, writing my master thesis on the organization of Turkic space. Uh, I have a little question. Uh, all of us know that uh, after the uh, Turkic space gear in, in they gain their independence, uh, and we have never been close each other like today. So, of course, there are several contributory uh, factors and organizations and initiatives to uh, bring us to date. But um, I was wondering that um, I think that the youth people and the young societies between, uh, I mean, in the Turkic uh, states uh, has a crucial role uh, for the future of the organization of Turkic states and, of course, um, ties between uh, the societies of our, uh, I mean, the common church world. So, uh, I'm wondering that is there any uh, initiatives or think tank uh, to uh, invest the young people uh, who, I mean, uh, wants to specialize and, uh, and as in, I mean, wants to be an expert uh, on the uh, Turkic world, on the uh, Turkic studies. And uh, of course, uh, there are some uh, exchange programs, student programs. And it's, it has been going on for several years, but um, I think that it must be uh, more deepened in the future because uh, only by this way uh, we can sustain these relationships uh, for more years, for many years. So uh, if you can uh, lighten me about this issue, I would be very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much and thank you for this insightful discussion. My name is Kadri and I'm with the JMAC process. My question would be about, like, actually, because this, we, we spoke about, uh, you, you spoke about the uh, potential of cooperation between the uh, S countries and European Union or as an organization of TS. But what about the, 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 this country's relations with Russia? I mean, until the war in Ukraine, all the war is still ongoing. Uh, so, but what we should expect in coming years, because we shouldn't forget that some of the countries that are member of these organizations, they have also quite a close and complicated relations with Russia. So what, I, I would be really curious to, to hear some of the supplements on, on this text. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So now I'm going to give one or two minutes to each speaker. Uh, to respond and find the comments, but we will continue our uh, you know discussion during the small. And so, uh, yeah, sure. And then I will have longer. No, no you can do. Yeah, because there is a okay important point. I think I need. Yeah, I will give it. It's been a day one. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, several points were raised. I, I'm not sure I, I want to focus on most of it, but I can, uh, I, I don't know who said, why were you for which country you mentioned the North Cyprus issue? What? My nationality? Yeah, no, I'm going to feature, but which organization? Uh, okay. I, I work with the European neighborhood, Cal. Uh, okay, great. Um, well, you know, I, I don't think that a European Union should see it this way. Uh, it's my opinion, personal opinion. Uh, because there are also policies and, so let's say, approaches in the European Union, for example, that could not make others happy as well. So um, I think this is, it shouldn't be an issue. He's, 
that's the cut if that's the decision that was taken by the organization itself. So I don't think the English community should see it this way. Oh, uh, this is how I see the issue. Um, another issue about uh, how practical cooperation can actually help. I agree that the practical cooperation right, on on like different practical issues uh, can help those countries to clean the organization to a big state to foster better political cooperation among themselves and of course uh, be a more united voice when it comes to dealing with external actors, including the European Union. So that's definitely the factor. Um, and the question about Russia, I think. You asked how our relationship with uh, Russia is like. Well, you know, it's a very difficult dance, I would say, when it comes to Russia, trying to strike some balance. Um, because otherwise, it, it's it's getting really complicated there. And the Azerbaijan has already signed a declaration on uh, a life interaction with the Russian Federation in the beginning of this year. Uh, it's not a strategic alliance document ratified by law. It doesn't have the same value as we had with Turkey, for example. The Shusha Declaration uh, has the status of treaty, for example. It was ratified by the parliament, so it's legally binding. But what we have with Russian Federation is just a declaration on strategic interaction, which means there's lots of grounds you can uh, uh, maneuver your way and uh, lots of ways to how to interpret this. But with Russia was trying to, let's say, keep our relations solid, at the same time trying to strike some balance. Occasionally some disagreements arise, definitely, especially after the uh, four to four day Karabakh war and the Russian peacekeepers uh, temporarily deployed in, in some of our areas. Um, therefore, I would call it uh, delicate balance. Let's, let's put it this way. But again, uh, when it comes to uh, Russia itself, obviously it wants to have its influence for as much as it's possible. Obviously it uh, has its own agenda. And what's happening in Ukraine is uh, obviously is very, very dangerous. And Azerbaijan has expressed his position strongly and openly that we support territorial integrity of Ukraine. And we have extended our helping hand to Ukra in Ukraine on many occasions. So um, that's what it is. But what I'm also going to under, underline here, and I, I hope that I will partner in your opinion, you won't, won't take it as a criticism, but rather a food for thought. Um, when it comes to Ukraine, uh, I mean, everyone, including ourselves, who are uh, very, very strongly vocal about how we support territorial integrity of Ukraine, how this is important that everyone abides by international law. But when it comes to other parts of the world, including Azerbaijan, we don't see the same approach. That's the problem with the European Union. Because they tend to have these different standards for different countries. And when it comes strong to extending strong support to Europe, Ukraine, yes. When it comes to Azerbaijan, well, we're trying to keep our balance attitude. Because, you know, there's Armenian, there's Azerbaijan. That's not how it works. Because if you're talking about international law, it should be universal and applicable to everyone. It should be standard. You cannot pick and choose when you're talking about international law. If you do that, then you're going to end up in situations like in Ukraine on many, many occasions, unfortunately. So that's what I wanted to say. Half of for thought. Thank you very much. You think? Shortly on this, and I totally disagree. I'm so sorry that being a bit near. I that up perhaps, but I would say I'd say, man, I want to contribute to this year, what you have raised the issue. It was exactly this not as a strategic communication expert. This was not timely. I would say this was not, I mean, uh, yes, this is, there is a fact and we have to admit this, but I think now there was a already existing relationship started. And this week already that we have the the, uh, the visit of the Boreal to the reach to this region. And now we are talking about supply chain, modernization of customs union, using Turkey regions and Turkey itself, Turkey itself as a pillar to entering this market. I have to admit this was not a uh, timely uh, thought uh, that at this moment to raise this issue. Although we have to wait. And so we have to see now the ratification from the member states. Uh, but um, in my view that, yes, Cyprus is, uh, Northern Cyprus is a big and long discussion. 
And if you want to approach the EU, we have to understand the common uh, approaches, common understanding for the future. So these are the, the, the basics that we have to develop because we have not reached to that level that we can see further. So that's why at the basic level, we need to really work on first finding the commonality and then move further. And that's why I would like to comment on this. And I do not think that there is a dual approach from the EU. Uh, as I can comment here, this has been a Turkish origin lady recruited in the European Parliament. And so there are ways to, 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 to work and collaborate with the EU. And, and you don't have to always, you know, be a one-sided. I think we have to understand from the other side and other side expectations and not only sticking to our own uh, values and own uh, descriptions may not be suitable for others. So my second comment for the, our dear friend here uh, for the, the, the youth mobility. So already um, ENC launched many programs with the EU funds uh, skilling uh, the youth uh, in the regions. I know many of them I myself witnessed and, and again, and EU is funding many projects to, to this region to also in terms of transformation of digitalizations and, and more and more skilled stuff. Of course, EU is aware of this. There's a ten, there's a future in the Central Asia and this growing youth populations. And now we have to find, as what I have tried to explain, that, you know, sometimes it's not easy to, to, to just, you know, um, start the relationship, but we need to find a way like Turkey and Turkey and EU is the same logic that with, with the programs that we have already existing programs, we need to focus on these programs so that in order to advance it and ensure that now we are living in difficult times and there will be times coming so that we can already start negotiating and, and discussing like to today, what we see with Turkey. And Turkey is back with the power. Uh, Turkey is back on, on the EU's table uh, with the security, also maybe food crisis, energy crisis, security crisis. So that's why we need to see and of the see project the, the future a bit more and then and then uh, shape our own policy. And uh, that's why I would like to comment on this with this. Uh, sorry that being a bit critical on this issue, but I try to see also from the EU perspective. Thank you very much. You said that I'm not. Let me, let me talk about the Turkish uh, perspective first. Uh, um, uh, first, this observer status is not uh, today a uh, topic. It's already uh, this discussed uh, from last year. I mean, this, this is a long time uh, Turkey, try, Tur Turkey, Turkey trying to convince the, uh, the other member state. And second thing is the, this uh, Turkic uh, organization of Turkic state they have the different uh, sub organization. Not only is states are members, but there are Tataristan part of the Russia. It's also a member of the, if I'm not wrong, Tutso. So it's not a big issue. But we haven't heard uh, from European Commission, which is a uh, European Union, the French Senate, uh, the, the calling the uh, for sanction on Azerbaijan. We can, I haven't heard any uh, response that one. So this is a kind of double standard we can see a European uh, Union has in this issue. Um, uh, the, I prefer to, of course, solve these problems a uh, more peaceful way. European Union could play the concrete role when this, uh, the Cyprus issues, when this uh, Anan plan came in 2004, but they, they didn't do it. Instead, they accepted the uh, Greek Cyprus as a uh, member state. That's the uh, problematic area. The, uh, talking about the uh, the the, to, uh, the member of the uh, Turkic state organization uh, relation with the Russia, but this is a huge topic. Each had the uh, specific relation. Kazakhstan relation with Russia, Uzbekistan relation with Russia is a separate issue. But the overall, uh, if you're looking from the the organization of how uh, Russia pursued organization of a Turkic state. They did a, um, okay. I think last year they did. Uh, um, they asked this question to uh, Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov and the uh, the um, Kremlin uh, speaker or uh, Putin speaker uh, Dmitry Peskov. They say that if this uh, organization not uh, much entered the issue of the security areas, other area where Russia is sensitive. Then that's okay. They can uh, talk and meet and so on. And, and let's not forget. 
the the Russia's view on organization of Turkish state is depends on the Russian relation with Turkey. So Russian relations, Turkey is it more important for Russia right now. For that reason, I don't think they will create any problem uh, related to organizations to deepening the economic relation and the economic relation with each other. It's also showing the limits, actually, of it. Of course, I mean, of course, it's because of the Russia's long time this uh, area is uh, controlling. I mean, they, they will not easily exit. This is a little delicate balance, a yeah, little delicate diplomacy need to uh, done by the Turkish government. Brother. Thank you for the comment and the questions. Uh, I also would like to propose the uh, Hungary as a observer in the RTS and the member of EU should have had such kind of meetings uh, because uh, there is the uh, EU, uh, there is the European Bureau of the OTS in Budapest, capital of the Hungary, and there is uh, also diplomat working uh, from the uh, uh, all the earth. According to uh, uh, observer status of the Memphis uh, Club of North in Northern Cyprus, uh, this is the not first time that uh, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus become an uh, observer. Uh, before the ODS, uh, when Northern Cyprus was observing the uh, Organization of fifty stomach in cooperation. And uh, so this is the same model and more humanistic and and a more social approach toward the Turkish side of the uh, idol. You know there uh, there is isolation the uh, against the Turkish uh, of the uh, Cyprus. Uh, so as a the Turkic solidarity, the uh, OTS should be of uh, uh, support to the uh, Turkish uh, society in the uh, Cyprus. Uh, I think, uh, uh, accepting as a member, full member of European Union, European Union become the hostage of the uh, Greek Cyp Cypriot had the. Uh, uh, Small and uh, island uh, of Turkey in policy strategies of the uh, EU, uh, European Union issue, uh, realize there is a fickle part of the uh, island and uh, they have also basic uh, rights, human rights. And they should also, uh, as a uh, 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 how to say, a uh, equal and uh, integral part of the uh, island, should uh, join to the European Union uh, uh, works. So uh, maybe if we uh, approach to the this issue from the positive side and from the uh, humanitarian side, this issue could become opportunity for the uh, cooperation uh, between EU and the uh, OTS, not the, the strategic female or strategic uh, barrier between the uh, two organizations. If we look uh, and if we approach from the humanitarian and social part, uh, we should try to uh, how to say integrate the, the Turkish South field to the European uh, uh, European Union activities and uh, 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 and uh, we will ease the isolation of the uh, isolation against the uh, uh, Turkish uh, Cypriot. 
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Fulat uh, Hocam. So, as we know that the state meetings will continue, I mean, the members of both among the 40 years EU. So, but it's not an obstacle for further cooperation. I think uh, the logic of conflict resolution, I mean, experts of conflict resolution, if we continue to talk, of, you know, if we include, uh, I think this will generate opportunities for finding a better ground. And I see this, uh, I know that uh, among the EU and OTS, there may be disagreements, but I think the potential is huge for the future. And among, we know that among the members of OTS, there are so many disagreements. So, but all this cooperation, all these efforts of communication, inclusivity, inclusivity will facilitate further dialogue and will probably allow, uh, you know, resolution of these issues. But we shouldn't, you know, probably start with, you know, the, you know, with the obstacles, I think, uh, you know, it is better to start with the, uh, without excluding these obstacles, but the cooperative area. So I would like to thank all of you for your valuable comments. Uh, you know, we will try to continue this dialogue with different uh, aspects, but for today's uh, event, I would like to thanks for all your contributions and please, we can also continue our uh, discussion with the uh, panelists, partners uh, at the lunch. Thank you very much.